Hello and welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today's video we're going to go over top-down knockback. Now while this is using a top-down view project, I'm sure you can apply some of this logic to a side view project too, if you need a little bit more smooth knockback. And with that said, let's get started. Alright, so here we are in a simple scene with our simple enemy here, plant guy, and our player. Now if we wanted to knock back this enemy, we can just go to its idle state, we'll just say, and we could actually create a new action. We could call it knockback. We could give it a higher speed, let's just say 700 by 700% for the horizontal vertical. And we could simply say that we want it to template move setting away from the player. And when we hit OK there, that's really all we need to do. We could even do takeover motion, or we could choose a, let's see here, let's do an attack setup here so it looks like it got hit. And we could say that when the hit an attack detection by the player group, that's when it will go to this knockback. And then after, say, a certain amount of time, let's do like 0.2 seconds. Then it will go back to random move, and we'll need to add another template move setting in the idle that says stop. All right, so this would be a very simple knockback, but let me show you what the problem is. So when we go and we attack our enemy, let's first, let's just see if it works. All right, so you can see that we did, so we got it moving away from the player. It's moving in a good direction, but what we are missing in it is it's not keeping its direction. Matter of fact, if, I, if it's facing me right now and I hit it, it faces the other way and gets thrown away. So... Let's fix that and let's make it to where it will face the player even though it's moving back. Now it does get a little more complicated, but if you want a smooth knockback like this, then that's what this tutorial is for. One thing I'd like to clarify right away is exactly how template move setting moves away from a player and towards a player. All right, since if we click into it, we don't have a choice if it's the center, if it's the floor, like we do with say move object. I'll just click on this, see move object, we have the choice. Do we move to the center? Do we move to the origin? Do we move to a connection point? All right, but with template move setting, we do not have that. We just have move towards nearby object and move away from nearby object. So what exactly is it moving away from? What part of the image? So if we go into the animations here, here's our plant guy, but this is not what we're moving away from. We're actually moving away from the player, right? So let's take a look at our player. All right, so here's our player, and we can see it on the sprite sheet. So we need to look at it based off the sprite sheet in its cell, okay? Because the template move setting is actually moving from the center of the cell. So it's not caring about the center, it's not caring about the origin, and it's not caring about any kind of connection point. It's purely focused on the center of this blue box. All right, this blue box is the cell. Now, this player is going to be a little inaccurate. If we wanted it to be completely accurate, we would have the feet, which is more where the core would be in the game. We would want the feet to be in the center of this cell. And then we would, we would want to base all cells based off that. All right, so the plant guy right here, it's actually more in line with a proper knob knockback if the player was to get knocked back from the plant it would actually be fairly accurate on how that player is moving away from the plant because its core right here it's about in the center of this cell so i just wanted to point that out that is how template move setting works when it's moving towards or moving away from the player or the group that you're choosing and real quick i'm just going to show the end result of what we'll be doing in this tutorial. So we got this plant on the left will be the end result. And you can see that now when you hit it, it actually stays its direction no matter what you're, what way you're going. Where this one, it changes to the direction that it's actually traveling. So essentially what you can kind of understand is that we need to lock the object's direction while we are sending it away. And so instead of recreating it from scratch, I'm actually going to just go into that proper working one and explain it. 
So let's start on the idle, which is the random movement. And right here we have a template move setting that is just moving randomly. The link to getting hit is the same where it's hit by an attack detection. In this case, it's player one or player two. Now, in the hit save direction, this is where we're going to save the direction, all right? So when you're trying to save directions and then you're trying to reapply directions at the end, and with move template in general, sometimes you kind of have to walk it through step by step. You can't just jam everything in one runtime action. And so we'll see this as we go through this. So the, the first thing that I do is I grab a variable that I've created called last direction. So this is the direction that it was facing and we equal it to the object self display direction. So we're taking the current display direction and we're putting it in this variable. You can see that I have created a variable called last direction. The display direction is a default variable that comes with every object. And it is ranging from, if you have a four direction movement, zero would be facing up, 90 would be facing right, 180 would be facing down, and 270 would be facing left. All right, so when we are taking that display variable and putting it in the last direction, we are actually assigning one of those directions. In this case, since we're using four direction, it would be one of those four directions. All right, the next thing that we do, and, and again, this is just so that we know what the last way it was facing was. And then we show an effect, and then we also stop the movement. Remember, in the random idle, it was moving randomly, and now we're stopping the movement of that random. And that way we can also get the last, the correct last direction. We stop it dead in its tracks and whatever way it was facing, that's the last direction. All right, so these next four are actually pretty simple to understand. We are basically grabbing the object's last direction and we're checking what it was. Was it 180 or facing down? Was it a 270 or facing left? Now, if you can see here in the actions, I named them according to the number pad or the uh, numpad keys. So two would be facing down, four would be facing left, six would be facing right, and eight would be facing up. And then these checks are according. So if it's equal to zero, then we are facing up. All right, so then the actions are corresponding to the direction as well. So normally, you'll see like on this random move right here, we have the wander motion, but we don't have it set. We just let the direction pick its uh, direction. But when we're talking about this knockback, we now want to control what way it's facing. So now that we know which way it's, it was facing, we can now control it by saying, we want this to face up. That was its last direction. Or this one, we want it to face right. That was its last direction. The same with left and the same with down. And not only are we controlling the motion direction, this is also where we're doing the actual knockback. So you can see that the horizontal speed and the vertical speed are all set to 700%. So that's the speed of the knockback. And then we also have the template move setting, the one that moves away from the nearby, and in this case, player group. So this is where the actual knockback is happening, but we're controlling the direction this time. And it's the same in four, uh, right and up. And the link down is going to be after a certain amount of time passes. This is going to be your knock, your knockback time. So in this case, it's just 0.15 and it's 0.15 for all of these directions. All right. So these last couple actions are where you kind of hold the object's hand and you walk it back to where it's supposed to be and what direction it's supposed to be. All right. So let's just see how we do it first and then I'll explain the reason behind it. All right, so the first thing that we do is after that brief 0.15 second, we then do a short pause and we template move setting, we stop. So the knockback is now stopped. We are, however, taking over motion. So we are retaining the direction motion that we had set in one of these four areas. All right, and that's key. If we did not have takeover motion here, even though we are template move setting stop right away, it is going to briefly face the direction that it was traveling during the knockback. So it's important that we have the takeover motion and it's important that the stop is in its own action. So then unconditionally, right after that pause, we then reset our direction, all right? Now notice this is still takes over motion. 
and I'll get to the reason why in just a second. But this is where we actually take the default display direction and we say, okay, the default display direction is equal to the last direction, the direction that we've been using for this knockback. And the reason why is because this display direction, remember, we are template move setting away from the player. So even though we are setting motions and we are hard setting the directions, the display direction is actually completely different and not associated with what we're changing right here. So the reason that we have to reset the direction with what its last direction was is because just by setting this direction does not change its direction. You're actually just hard setting. You're, you're manipulating it only for the action. And then when it leaves the action, it's going to go back to its original, what the actual display direction is. So that was the reason why we had to reset the direction. And it's also why we had to keep the takeover motion in this action. Because even though we're changing the direction back to its last direction in this action, for that blip, that split second, that one frame, it's going to go back to the other direction and then instantly go back to the last direction. Because the takes over motion wasn't applied. So it was going to be facing the direction it wanted to face. And then it's going to instantly face the last, last direction. And it's going to look weird. So that's why we have to keep the takes over motion even right here. Now that we have actually set the display direction correctly because it stopped, that's the only reason we can set it is because it stopped. Then we can actually let it go back to random move. And now it does not need to take over motion and it doesn't need a specific direction set and it will be facing the correct way. And we can see that once again, as we go about and hit it from every direction that we can. All right, so that's just one way you can produce a smoother knockback in your top-down games. I'm sure there is multiple ways to do it, probably easier ways. This is just the one that worked for us. And these little things that we had to do, save direction, control the direction, stop the movement so that we can change the direction back to what it was, they were just small things that I had to figure out. And it mostly had to do with how template move setting works and with how the display direction works along with uh, the motion directions. And so I hope this was helpful. And with that, I'll see you at the next video.